Antoine. It seems like a lifetime since I last set foot on her surface. Though in truth, it's only been a few months. We should be safe from Malak here. For now, at least. Safe? You saw what his fleet did to Terrace. There wasn't a building over two stories high left standing. They, they turned the planet into one big pile of rubble. Even the Sith would think twice before attacking Dantooine. There are many Jedi here, including several of the most powerful Masters of the Order. There is great strength within this place. We can get supplies here and recuperate. The Academy is a place of mental and spiritual healing. Something we could all use after what we've been through. Maybe you're right. It isn't easy to witness the annihilation of an entire planet. I know Meshin must be taking it pretty hard. She will find a way to come to terms with her grief. She's stronger than she appears. We just need to give her time. Now I must go speak with the Council. I need their advice on recent developments. After I've met with them, I will meet you outside the ship. The destruction of a planet is a devastating thing to witness. But it is even more difficult to comprehend that one's entire past and every place and individual they learned to know no longer exists. Huh? Oh, sorry. I was thinking about Terrace. I still can't believe it's gone. I mean, I grew up there and now it's... it's... it's just gone. The Jedi got rid of Revan, so... I figure Malik's days are numbered too. But that doesn't make the pain go away, you know? Look, I'm not saying I can't go on or anything like that. It's just... it's a shock, you know? I mean, I knew the Sith were evil and all, but the reality of it kind of slaps you in the face. But I suppose that's why we need to stop Malik, right? The more time I spend dwelling on Terrace, the more chance some other planet will get wiped out. I guess that's what it comes down to. So don't worry about me. I'll be okay. And if you need my help against Malik or the Sith, I'll be there for you. Much resilience in that one. Dantooine is a world of grasslands, rivers and lakes. It hosts a small population of mostly human farmers, Dantooine has a rich wildlife, no industrial settlements or advancements, and is the home of the Jedi Academy and its council. The Jedi Council begin their deliberation, noting that they would ordinarily be against accepting an adult for training. But this is a special case, as this Republic soldier has a very strong connection to the Force. We have been discussing your rather special case. I am Jar, a member of the Jedi Council. With me are Master Vrook, Master Vandar, and of course the chronicler of our academy, Master Dorak. Padawan Bastila, I am sure you are already familiar with. We are the council in charge of the training facility here on Dantooine. Bastila tells us you are strong in the Force. We are considering you for Jedi training. While most appear to be in favor of this, Master Vrook cautions of the risks of the dark side. We need recruits to stand against Malak. With Revan dead. Are you certain Revan is truly dead? What if we undertake to train this one and the Dark Lord should return? We should discuss this matter more fully in private. Bastila, you and your companion must go. This is a matter for the Council alone. As you wish, Master Vandar. We shall return to the Ebon Hawk and leave you to your deliberations. The dark side is strong in this place. I can feel its power. Is this wise? The ancient Jedi sealed this archway. If we pass beyond this door, we can never go back. The Order will surely banish us. Are the secrets of the Star Forge so valuable? Can its power truly be worth the risk? This morning's getting stranger by the minute. First Bastila comes out looking like she saw a ghost, and now you. Well, Bastila did mention that you should go to the council chambers before she left. It's no doubt urgent, so you shouldn't keep them waiting. Bastila has told us of a most unusual development. She claims you and she have shared a dream. 
a vision of Malak and Revan in the ancient ruins here on Dantooine. These ruins have long been known to us, but we believe them to be merely burial mounds. Perhaps there are more than we first suspected, if Revan and Malak found something there. The soldier remains puzzled as to why the two shared the vision about these ruins. Still, he knows very little about the Force. He is no Jedi, and this occurrence may not be as strange or rare as he imagines. You and Bastila share a powerful connection to the Force, and each other. The Council has decreed that you and Bastila must investigate the ancient ruins you dreamed of. Once the Council deems you ready, you must be trained in the ways of the Jedi, so that you can resist the darkness within yourself, within all of us. Otherwise you are doomed to fail. The ruins are a place of corruption. The dark side is strong there. We cannot risk sending you there unprepared. We must begin your training at once. The path you have chosen to walk is difficult. Intensive training will prepare you physically for the demands of the Order. Meditation will teach you to channel the power of the Force. To truly understand the way of the Jedi, you must open your mind to knowledge. Seek wisdom in the teachings of the great masters of our Order. The Jedi is never alone. Others in the Order will always stand by you. You and Bastila share a special bond. Do not be afraid to turn to her when you need help in your training. The way of the Jedi is difficult. It requires great discipline. Yet even though you are a mere apprentice, your potential is unlimited and your progress amazing. In all my years, I have never seen one who has mastered the initial training so quickly. You've done in weeks what many cannot do in years. I am honored to welcome you fully into the Jedi Order. Soon your apprenticeship will end, and you will be granted the title of Padawan, the lowest rank of those within the Jedi Order. Yet first you must prove yourself worthy. You have learned your studies well, apprentice. As the second test, each Jedi must construct his lightsaber with his own hands. And now it is your time. Listen to me. There is much weight, much craving attached to such a tiny thing of light. A lightsaber, any weapon, only achieves worth in how it is wielded, in the effort, in the struggle of one who holds it. Such a weapon does not make a Jedi or a Sith, and at times it makes them much, much less than they are. You have done extremely well in constructing your lightsaber, Apprentice. Are you ready to face the final challenge, Apprentice? You must see the corruption of the dark side for yourself. Even here on Dantooine, there are places where the dark side holds sway. One such place is a grove, some distance from the Enclave, where a source of the dark side exists that corrupts the beasts in the area. The source of this corruption is a young woman, haunted by anger and pain. And regret. Your lessons cannot continue until the spreading corruption of the dark side has been stopped. This is your task, apprentice. May the Force be with you. I will be your doom! You, you are strong, stronger than me, even in my darkness. I am Juhani, and this is my grove. This is the place of my dark power. This is the place you have invaded. When I embrace the dark side, this is where I sought my solace. It is mine. The soldier senses much anger in Juhani. He investigates further to find out what caused her to fall. When I slew my master, Quatra, I knew I could never go back. And now I revel in my dark power. Power enough to crush the life from someone such as you. Or so I had thought. Juhani appears as someone with a troubled past. And she is easily blinded by her anger. With some discipline and self-care, she could become a great Jedi and an even greater individual. The soldier advises her to give up the path she is headed down 
After all, it did not even provide her with sufficient power to defeat a novice. I seem to still have much to learn, both about being a Jedi and about myself. I thank you, Master Jedi. I will return to the Council then. I shall submit myself to their judgment and hope they will forgive me. Again, I thank you. I am sure I will hear great things about you in the future. You have done well, my pupil. The ancient grove has been purified, and Juhani's journey down the dark path has been halted. Juhani is both dedicated and true to the ideals of the Order, yet she was still vulnerable to the dark side, as are we all. She struck her master in anger during her training and injured her greatly. But it was Quatra's choice to test Juhani this way, and it seems to have made its point. Juhani has been redeemed, and you have passed your final test. Congratulations, apprentice. Or should I say, congratulations, Padawan. Your training is now complete, Padawan. And perhaps now it is time we dealt with the matter of the dream you and Bastila shared. When we heard of the ruins in your dreams, we sent a Jedi to investigate, but he has not returned. Perhaps sending him in the first place was a mistake. The Force is guiding you through your visions. It may be that exploring the ruins is a task tied to your destiny. Be sure to bring Bastila with you. There is a powerful link between you, and you will need to draw strength from each other during the trials ahead. The Council provided guidance, but the Padawan now wonders why so many questions remain unanswered. For a start, it is unclear why the vision came to the two of them, or how their bond was formed. I truly don't have an answer for you. The Force works as it will, and perhaps we should be grateful for what we've been given. So he's just supposed to accept the fact that he is linked to Bastila? Believe me, I certainly don't find the prospect of being joined to you enjoyable in any fashion. That's a bit harsh. Please, forgive me. I did not mean to imply that you were repulsive in any sense of the word. That we shared something so personal is just not something I'm used to. I've been thinking about what the Jedi Council said about the two of us. There is a bond between us. I do not dispute that. I can feel it, as I'm sure you can. The nature of that bond and its effect on our mission remain in question. The nature of the bond? Please. I'm a Jedi. Such feelings, such attractions are... Well, they're beneath me, quite frankly. I admit, I find you intriguing. I... I I mean, I find your command of the Force intriguing, but my interest in you is purely academic. Surely you can understand why. This bond we share will shape both our destinies. It is not to be taken lightly. So many things have happened to you since Taurus. It's probably a lot for you to absorb. We can speak again later, after you've had time to think about all this. They should return to business anyhow. The ancient ruins appear as a large burial mound, with memorial stones in the front. The traces in the grass indicate someone was here recently. The ruins are silent, the rooms are vast, and the construction is unlike anything they had seen before. Whatever Revan and Malak discovered here is behind them. There's something else in the way, something ancient. This language is unknown to any of the three. Another unknown language. I think the droid is trying to communicate with us by cycling through a variety of languages. Each time it spoke, it was using a very different alien dialect. The droid can probably understand us. The only problem is it may not have been programmed with the phenomes of a language we can understand. This language is familiar, an archaic variant of the Selkath dialect spoken on the planet Manan. Why would a droid on Dantooine be programmed to speak ancient Selkath? Translation. Communication was vital to ensure that the slaves constructed this temple according to the wishes of the builders. But you are not of the slave species. Neither are you of the builders. You are like the one who came before. 
it must be referring to Revan. The Dark Lord and Malak likely encountered this droid when they explored these ruins. I am the Overseer. The Builder has programmed me to enforce discipline among the slaves. While this monument to the power of the Starforge was constructed, at project completion, all slaves were executed. I was reprogrammed to serve should a Builder return in search of knowledge of the Starforge. There are no historical records of slaves or the Starforge. This droid must have been here for a long time. My chronological circuits have marked over ten full revolutions of this system's outmost planet around the sun since the Builders left. Ten revolutions would take more than 20,000 years. If this is true, then this droid is nearly 5,000 years older than the Republic itself. Uh, there must be some mistake. There is no mistake. The Builders constructed my chronological circuitry using the technology of the Starforge itself. My calculations are infallible. These Builders must have been an extinct people. Though it is strange, there's no record of their existence. Even the archives of the Jedi Academy make no mention of them. In the years before the Republic, the Huts were a dominant force in the galaxy, but they never constructed an empire. In fact, I know of no species that would fit with this information. This droid speaks Selkath. Perhaps the Selkath have some connection to the Builders. The Selkath were nothing but slaves and servants of the true masters. Like all the other species, they bowed down before the might of the Builders and the Starforge. Perhaps these Builders are connected to the Sith. I know nothing of these Sith. But they are not the Builders. The Builders are the Builders. Something must have happened to these Builders. The Empire of the Builders is infinite and everlasting. None can stand against their might and the power of the Starforge. If they were still alive, they'd likely have visited this monument at one point, and that would hardly have gone unnoticed by Dantooine's inhabitants. I have been here ever since the completion of this monument. In all this time, no Builder has returned to seek information on the Starforge. The Starforge is the glory of the Builders, the apex of their infinite empire. It is a machine of invincible might, a tool of unstoppable conquest. But what is the Starforge? What does it physically do? The... The Starforge is the glory of the Builders, the apex of their infinite empire. It is a machine of invincible might, a tool of unstoppable conquest. The droid is obviously not programmed with the knowledge we seek. The Starforge sounds like some type of weapon, perhaps. Though in fact, it could be anything. Now that the slaves are gone, my purpose is to aid those who seek knowledge of the Starforge, if they are worthy. The ones who came before you, the ones like you. Not builders, but not slaves, sought knowledge of the Starforge and its origins. They proved themselves worthy. They discovered the secrets of the Starforge, locked beyond the sealed door behind me. But there was another who failed to unlock the secrets and paid the ultimate price. The droid must be talking about poor Nemo. The Council sent him here to investigate. And it cost him his life. Enter the proving grounds to the east and west. Within them, those who understand the will of the builders can unlock their secrets and open the doors. But those who fail will be destroyed by the power of the temple itself. More than this, I'm not programmed to say. Revan and Malik unlocked the sealed door and uncovered the secrets of the Starforge. We have to find out what they uncovered. We have to find a way to unseal these doors to learn more about the Starforge. The Republic is depending on us. The main door forward is sealed. Upon opening the door to the west and the door to the east, each contains a droid of similar construction as the one they had just encountered. But while they appear ancient and fragile, these droids prove immensely difficult to overpower. It is difficult to believe that technology this old can endure so much damage and cause even more. The droids in each room guard a terminal, each offering a single question. The questions are somewhat obsolete and easily answered as they require the user to identify planet types best suited for life and death. These questions do shed some light on the view and understanding of a species that would name itself the Builders. Once these questions are answered correctly, the main doors are unsealed. This must be what Revan and Malak found when they entered this temple. This must be where their journey down the dark side began. This is a, a map, some sort of intergalactic navigational chart. Revan and Malak must have used this to lead them to the Starforge. We could use this map to follow their path and find the Starforge ourselves, but we must be wary. 
They may have laid traps or concealed what they found. Whatever the Starforge is that the droid mentioned, this probably isn't it. It doesn't appear capable of producing anything other than a map. I don't know, but Revan and Malak were very interested in finding it. It must be a tool of some type, or maybe a weapon. Perhaps the Council can tell us more, but I think this map might be the key to finding the Starforge, whatever it is. See this world here? This looks like Korriban, a Sith world. And if that's Korriban, then this is Kashek, and Tatooine, and here's Manan. But there are pieces missing, incomplete hyperspace coordinates. There's much corrupted data. And there doesn't seem to be anything indicating where the Starforge itself might be. But these worlds could contain more clues that could be used to triangulate the location of the Starforge. I was thinking that too. This map can't take us to the Starforge. But I know that Revan and Malik visited Korriban at least once. Perhaps they discovered something more there. They may have found something on each of the other worlds that completed this map. Maybe if we find all the pieces, they'll lead us to the Starforge some way to destroy it. That sounds like quite a supposition. What if you're wrong? What if I'm right? We can't ignore this. Finding the Starforge might very well be the key to defeating the Sith. We must inform the Council of what we've discovered. They must decide our next course of action, though I suspect our task has only just begun. This news of a Starforge is disturbing. Action is required, but we must not do so in haste. The Council agrees with the assessment of the Dantooine star map. The Padawan and his crew are tasked to seek these maps out, for sending out large numbers of Jedi at once would raise suspicion. Secrecy and discretion are paramount to your success. You will not be able to hide the fact that you are a Jedi, nor should you. But the true nature of your mission must not reach Malak's ears. You may return here at any time. Dantooine will be a sanctuary for you. A safe haven. The lure of the dark side is difficult to resist. I fear this quest to find the Star Forge could lead you down an all too familiar path. The fate of the galaxy is in your hands, young Padawan. We pray you are up to the challenge. Five planets and hopefully five star maps need to be localized. With the Dantooine star map found, this leaves Tatooine. Kashik, Manan, and Korriban. But before the parting, the Padawan checks in with the crew, in particular its latest addition, a Jedi who requested to join Ebon Hawk's crew on this mission. I feel I must apologize for the way I acted towards you before in the Grove. It was wrong of me. I am sorry for attacking you. I am sorry for thinking you would only try to kill me. I hope that by helping you in your task, I may redeem myself in your eyes and in my own. Juhani has a very long path ahead of her, perhaps longer than any Padawan. She is without a doubt prone to the dark side's influence, for she has no control over her emotions. But she is moving in the right direction. Thank you. It is most reassuring to know that you can forgive me, even though I tried to take your life. I can only hope that, in our time journeying together, I will succeed. Unlike some of the greatest Sith in history, Juhani's fall was not caused by hunger for power, It is mainly brought on by anger and rage she cannot control. Dealing with this, learning to control her emotions, will build a strong foundation for her growth. But it will not happen quickly. More time is needed to reflect and focus on these faults. More time would do me good. Time to distance myself from that anger. I thank you for your concern and your acceptance. I will strive to prove that I am worthy of your company and trust. On with the mission. The first destination in line is Tatooine. It has a relatively limited area that supports civilization being a massive desert, and the star map there will perhaps be easier to find than on other planets. Before departing, Bastila wants to discuss something with the Padawan. Her expression is easily giving this away. It most certainly is not. I am a Jedi, remember? I have far too much mental discipline to reveal what goes on inside my mind with such obvious physical clues. My thoughts remain hidden, including whatever my feelings are for you. I I mean, whatever I feel... I mean, whatever I think about you. Indeed. It's quite clear what she thinks of him. I... That is you... Why must you be so impossibly infuriating? You know very well what I am really talking about. I am referring to the bond between us, the one the Jedi Council spoke of. Our connection allows us glimpses into each other's mind. 
We can feel some of what the other feels. And what I feel within you troubles me. The fact that you are so strong in the Force and have had such relatively little training could have terrible consequences. For you, and for everyone around you. Certainly it is to be expected from arrogant individuals, or those who use their power lightly. But he has not displayed an affinity to either. In fact, he feels quite in control. Still, Bastila is an experienced Jedi, and she may know a few things he does not. When you need guidance or advice or support, I will do my best to help you stay on the path of the light. For now, we should return to our mission. Tatooine is quite a distance away, and in that time the Padawan gets a glimpse into the lives of the crew a bit closer. Apart from Candorus's war stories of epic proportions... An 80-kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry, and with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the... Garth reveals the reason he doesn't trust anyone. When I think of all the men who betrayed us, the one that stands out above all of them is the one that I respected the most, Saul. Admiral Saul Karath betrayed the Republic, and under Malak's command bombarded the planet Telos. Karth's wife died in the bombardment, and his son's body was never found. Admiral Saul Karath is the commander of the entire Sith fleet. He's half the reason Malak has done so well in the war. During this trip, Bastila also fills the Padawan in on the common knowledge about Revan and Malak, and how Malak betrayed and killed his master. We were there to capture Revan alive. The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. Lastly, Juhani shares more about her past, that she was enslaved as a child, and that it was the Jedi who set her free from her captors. When I saw a Jedi for the first time, they lived up to everything my imagination had created them to be. From that moment on, I knew that I would have to try to become a Jedi. The foolish delusions of a child. Perhaps I may yet live to see that dream of mine come true. Come, there is much we should do. Let us not waste time talking. Action is what is needed. Juhani has a natural talent for force camouflage, which manipulates the light and sound around her, making her extremely difficult to detect. However, apart from the great energy expenditure, this ability requires a great degree of concentration and focus. With time, it is likely Juhani will be able to use this skill to the extreme and become a very skilled practitioner, should she continue building her focus and inner strength. <laughs> 